Hi, I'm Mark Jardine and this is Sail for Gold Live. It was a big day for the Brits over in Rio yesterday. First of all, Nick Thompson, who hadn't had the best of regattas so far, managed to knock in a second and a first place, which has propelled him up to second overall on the leaderboard. Giles Scott, again after a bad first race, third and then a second and then a first, which has moved him up to the top of the leaderboard. The NACRA 17s were on the Sugarloaf course, a difficult course at best, and something that the sailors just want to get out of the way. Ben Saxton and Nicola Groves managed to put in a brilliant day and are tied on points at the top of the leaderboard. The 470s started their campaign. While not the best of starts for them both, they put in solid results. And as we've seen from the other classes, if you get solid results to start off with, you can then start climbing. Last night, I caught up with Andy Rice to hear all the action from Rio. So, Andy, we um, talked yesterday and the thing that really was a problem, you had no reason to talk to the British sailors. Hopefully after today, you have. Yes, it was a very, very good day to be British. Uh, where should we start? I think for me, the standout performance was Nick Thompson. Uh, he could have re been really down in the dumps about his early performances in this Olympic regatta, uh, but it was a windy, wavy day for the lasers. And despite the fact that Nick is not one of the big guys in the laser, he has really adapted himself to that boat over the years and proven himself to be one of the fastest in a breeze. And he had the best day. Um, so he's surged up the rankings to second overall, which is an incredible performance. We were all looking at the leaderboard in the laser class, and even though he was out of the top 10 yesterday, the points were so close that just one day's good performance could put, propel him right up there, and he's done exactly that. Um, it must have taken an, an immense mental effort to sustain belief in, in his ability. Yeah, I think most of the Brits are really, really good at this. They've had so many examples shown to them over the years. Ben Ainsley is the, the obvious candidate. He tended to start his Olympic campaigns terribly and managed to bounce back from that. And others uh, like uh, Nick Rogers and Joe Glanfield in the 470, when they came ashore at the end of a day's racing in China 2008, they were always smiling. I, I never knew if they'd had a good or a bad day. You just couldn't tell. Um, and there are those that wear their heart on their sleeve and, and they're the ones that I worry about because uh, the ones where you, you can see it written on their faces before you even get there, um, they're the ones that I wonder if, they, if they've got the mental toughness for it. And one of the other things I've noticed standing in the mix zone, the, the sailors are forced to, to walk through the mix zone and at least pass by the media even if they don't want to talk to them. And here I'm noticing that the faster somebody is walking is a good sign of just how bad a day they've had. So basically they just want to get their head down and get right past the media without having a conversation if they can possibly avoid it. Well, in that case, a man who must have been walking pretty slowly today must have been Giles Scott. Uh, yes, he was. I mean, I, I, he's not a big fan of talking to the media, but he knows it has to be done. Um, and yes, he did stop. And we had a good chat with Giles. And uh, he said the important thing from yesterday was not to panic. Um, I, I, I think we spectators and, and, and us in the media, we, you know, our emotions rise and fall with, with every result. And the sailors tire of us a little bit like that, I think, because they train themselves to keep themselves on the level. And I don't think Giles was really that concerned about his performance yesterday. And he went out there today. And to add to his third place from the end of yesterday, which wasn't too shabby anyway, he got a second and a first. And, and lo and behold, he's leading the rankings and looking very, very good, back where we expected him to be. And of course, today, the NACRA 17s and the 470s started. And it was a very solid start by our NACRA 17 team. Uh, yeah, um, Ben Saxton and Nicola Groves... Uh, I mean, it was such wacky races. I mean, it, it was the the crazy thing was that the the out to sea courses, uh, which we couldn't actually see, but I, I'm just looking at some of the photos that that have come back from today. Um, just so wild out there, really big waves, big wind, and then on the other side of Sugarloaf Mountain, on the, on the inshore side where we are at the uh, Olympic Arena, it was so different. It was light winds. It was all over the place as it has been 
on the Sugarloaf Mountain course all week. Um, and uh, well, I mean, if you if you watch that first NACRA race as I did, well, I mean. You, you, you had to feel for the Swiss at the halfway point because they were in a fairly good lead and then they dropped out of the top 10. And then what do you know at the end, they, they got a 200 meter lead and they look like they're going to cross the finish line easily. And then the Singaporeans are closing in on the, the, at the finish. But the Swiss just hang on. But I reckon there was about five seconds between the first six boats crossing the finish line and crossing the finish line in third were the Brits. Um, and they followed up with, I think it was a fifth in the next one. So they were probably the most um, consistent performers of the day in, in terms of uh, keeping both scores in the top five. Really impressive by them. We had been told beforehand that some of the Rio race courses were shifty and difficult. But it does seem to be, now you see it, you can actually believe just how difficult it is to race there. But I think uh, the difficulty is surprising people even here. There's, there's quite a few people saying it's another case of it's not normally like this. We, we haven't had um, much, if any, of this westerly wind while we've been training. So um, I, I think the level of wackiness is, is taking some people by surprise. And I think it's worrying them that, uh, well, they're, they're pleased when they've got past the Sugarloaf Mountain course, but they know that if they make the top 10, um, and get into the medal race that they could well be deciding the uh, the medals on that virtual lottery of a race course. I mean, I, I don't think anyone can truly say they've got a handle on that Sugarloaf Mountain course. I'm here with Matt Alvarado, who was watching the NACRA 17 racing live on TV yesterday. Matt, how was it to watch the racing as a sailor? Um, it was incredible, Mark. I was finishing up some work, I've got to say that, because I was working from home, but I had an iPad on and for the 20 minutes that it lasted, I couldn't take my eyes off it. Um, I don't know how they keep their cool. I think Ben Saxton keeps his cool because he grew up sailing on Grafham. But what I saw was the most hectic uh, race I've, I've ever seen live. Uh, I don't know if there were swings in direction, but the pressure differences uh, and the speed of the boats meant that there were boats overtaking. Um, there were rafts up to the lure of marks. Um, there were, uh, <laughs> The, the, the pressure that these guys are under, I, I just can't, I don't know how to cope, I really don't. It does seem this Sugarloaf course is one that you just want to get out of the way, done, and try and knock in some decent results. For Saxton and Groves to actually do that, how do they manage it in their minds? I don't know. I think it's just the Olympic way of never give up. Um, I'm pretty sure that some of the top teams will have just had a target of perhaps 10 points for the two races. I don't think anyone's going out there on the Sugarloaf course saying, um, you know, I'm going to get two bullets. The fastest team in the world over the last four years, Billy Besson, he was pretty deep. I know he's had an injury, but, um, you know, you, you just can't go out to the Sugarloaf course and expect to do well. Um, the Brazilian guy uh, had a technical problem in the first race and was last, and he won the second race by a country mile. So I don't know how they keep up. I don't know how they keep their, uh, keep their cool, but I guess it's just um, four years of their lives, um, and they're just going to keep their heads down. Well, Matt, enjoy carrying on watching the rest of the racing while working. Thanks, Mark. Cheers. I'm here with Ben Cornish and Elliot Hansen, Finn and Laser Sailors and training partners to our Olympians. Um, watching the racing, it seems so up and down. Ben, how do you keep your cool in conditions like that? Uh, I think you kind of just got to take every day as it comes. And for example, the first day on Sugar Loaf, it's, we expected it to be really up and down racing. And Giles and the other guys would have gone out there that day and known that to come in with two average scores is better than having two disasters. Yeah. Elliot, watching on the lasers, Nick Thompson looked like he was completely buried coming into yesterday and then knocks in a 2-1 result. How did he pull that out of the bag? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think with the lasers, it's definitely going to be one of the closest classes right until the, the very last race, or the last few hundred metres of the last race, in fact. Um, but what was promising from Nick was, although he was rounding the windward marks deep in, in the first two days, he was actually pulling through to get some quite good results. And, and now he's actually got the second best discard of the fleet. So. To show that speed and pull through when, it, when he's having a bad race uh, shows that you know he's, he's got the potential to take it all the way, sorry, through to the end. Um, and when he does round in the top few, he, like you say, he's, he's, he's managed to knock in a one-two yesterday. It's an extraordinary situation where only five boats have all top 20 results so far. How do you stay consistent in a fleet like that? <laughs> ah, experience is, is my only is my only answer. Yeah, experience sailing, experience on those waters because. I mean, you look at the names that are in that fleet, Robert Scheidt, he's got more Olympic medals than, or he's been to more Olympics than anyone uh, I'm aware of. Um, I think they just have to keep a cool head and keep plugging away and not think about the results too much, take each race as it goes. 
And Ben, Giles, after his bad first race, has got straight back to the business that he usually does. Yeah, I think it would take a bit more than a bad first race to throw him off his course. So I think uh, he's got his, got his results back as to where they should be at the top, and I think he'll carry on plugging away. When it comes down to the medal races, they're sailing even further inshore on the Sugar, Ro Sugar Life course. How are they going to keep their nerves then? I, they can't think about it. I, myself and Ben, we've done you know a, a just as much time on those courses, and you know, we're no stranger to the fact that the whole race can turn inside out. But it's just about managing risk, and you, you, you're just going to have to play place your bets and, and and hope they can come out on top. I think they, they they are more experienced on those courses than most sailors, and and hopefully the wins will be more fair. But I wouldn't like to call it at the minute. <laughs> And Ben, will it be Giles' usual routine of trying to build up a 20-point lead before the medal race? Uh, obviously, that'll be a lot harder because of the size of the fleet. So he's going to have a little bit more of a job, I think, going into the medal race. But I'm sure that with another eight races, six races to play for, then uh, there's opportunity to build some points. Well, Ben, Elliot, many thanks indeed for your time. Let's enjoy the rest of the racing. Thanks. As we've seen, the weather in Rio is hard to predict at best. And yesterday... There were strong winds out to sea and light winds on the Sugarloaf course. Today we're going to see west-southwest moving round west-northwest, west, but we'll see if that's actually the case as the day pans out. Many thanks for watching. For your chance to win some official British Sailing Team gear, send us your comments and questions using the hashtag SailForGold on Facebook and Twitter. Watch again, same time tomorrow.